Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another Boruto Naruto Next Generation discussion on the fallout from Boruto Chapter 79. And today, I want to talk to you guys about why Kawaki's decision to seal away Naruto and him taking advantage of Ada Shinjutsu to frame Boruto for the murders of Naruto and Hinata are just the first of a few moves that are coming down the pipeline from Kawaki that are going to shape the future of Boruto's manga in a major way. And the basis for all this is coming to us via a fan theory sent to me via Twitter that really stood out because of the impact that it would have on the series. So according to them, they're saying that Kawaki is playing 5D chess right now. And while everyone's focused on the moves that Kawaki just made, i.e. sealing Naruto and making Boruto be framed as Naruto's killer, the real moves that Kawaki's made haven't even come into the picture just yet. And they're very specific about what Kawaki's about to do. So here's what they said. They believe that Kawaki's about to pull a 180 once everything settles down and either kill Ada or trap Ada in a timeless dimension known as the Daiko Kuden while Damon isn't around in order to prevent Boruto or anyone else from reversing what just happened via the Shinjutsu itself. In particular, they say that once this is done, that Kawaki would just tell Damon that Boruto is the one who killed Ada, making Damon direct all of his anger and strength towards Boruto. Now, longtime viewers know exactly why I love this suggestion. I've been saying for almost a year now, I believe that Kawaki will end up turning on Ada at some point in the series because of that trope, you know, love kills, love betrays. Ada is seeking love and winds up finding someone who that she falls in love with who can actually love her in return and they actually end up betraying her, potentially even killing her. But I didn't have anything thought out beyond Kawaki just gets to a point where Ada outlives her usefulness to him and Kawaki Kawaki just throws her away either by betraying her or outright killing her. This suggestion right here, it narratively is something that can actually work. Look at all the foreshadowing that we've had since Ada has debuted in the manga. She said that Otsuki could kill her just after Ada said this was the case. Amato flat out tells Kawaki that even after losing the Karma Seal, his body is still genetically Otsuki. Something that Ada said as well that Boruto and Kawaki are immune to her because of that and therefore they could actually kill her. Ko at one point in the series tells Ada it's not wise to be around Kawaki alone because Kawaki could kill her. But we as the audience, just like Ada, wrote off what Code saying is merely Code being jealous of Kawaki yet again. You know, simple or Code mad that Ada's walls belong to Kawaki. However, the foreshadowing continued to get layered on even thicker with the reveal that Damon was being super cautious around boards on Kawaki because he viewed them as threats to Ada, part of why he was so quick to assert his dominance over the two of them by bullying them when he first met them, it was to make the law be known. You touch my sister and I'm going to kill you. Kawaki has already tried to fight Damon and he lost. Kawaki knows that Boruto's in the same boat as him. Neither of them could actually beat Damon if it came down to it as they are right now. Kawaki currently has the entire village looking for Boruto, but if it ever gets to a point where it looks like Boruto's going to escape, Kawaki needs another backup plan that keeps him from going after Boruto directly, or at least until he's able to hedge his bets in order to make sure that nobody gets in his way. Right now, Ada is alone with Kawaki. The idea that Kawaki doesn't and kill Ada but steals her away to prevent anyone from reversing the Shinjutsu or he uses his karma to place her into another dimension. It isn't that crazy to think that Kawaki would go this far. The guy was waiting at Naruto's home in the shadows waiting for Boruto so he could kill him before he actually went to the Hokage monument and just tried to kill Boruto there. So this doesn't feel like something that Kawaki would be above doing. It lets him keep Ada in either a place where he can continue to use her Simrigan. He could place her in the Daikoku if he isn't sure that Ada and Damon have some type of a power that allows them to communicate, but so far there's no indication that that's actually the case because Damon freaked out when Ada flew away. So it's possible that we see something else take place where Kawaki keeps around solely to take advantage of her visual powers while also keeping her someplace that no one else has access to to reverse her Shinjutsu, even if it's theoretically possible they could do that. This makes even more sense when we factor in what Ada herself said. Her combat skill is limited only to basic taijutsu, which means it doesn't matter how strong she is. Just like with anything else in combat, if that person doesn't have the skill to connect with the hit, all that power is going to be wasted, and Kawaki just happens to be learning to tap into Ishiki's combat experience at a super alarming rate. There's something here for this narratively when you look at all the potential foreshadowing we have here. If Kawaki were to go down this path, it paint him as a truly calculated character with no loyalties to anyone except for Naruto, which would 
definitely make us have to take another look at Shikamaru as well as Boruto, who initially warned Naruto that, hey, they had a bad feeling about Kawaki. And when we factor in Shikamaru's interactions with Kawaki in the anime, Shikamaru had several suspicions about Kawaki and he did not trust him. Shikamaru saw past the outside exterior of Kawaki and he was not clouded by emotion like Naruto was when he was projecting his own feelings and past experiences onto Kawaki because Naruto played the I grew up a Jinchuriki card and the third Hokage never locked me away. I could never do this to Kawaki. We're now seeing that Shikamaru and Boruto were right. Kawaki is extremely dangerous. Narratively, it does one more thing in the sense that for Ada and Kawaki's relationship, it pushes it a little further because now it puts Ada in a situation where if this does happen or if it is something that Kawaki's contemplating, she's going to have to find another way to be a value to Kawaki besides having those magic eyes that can see everything when she cuts them on. For Boruto, if Kawaki does go this route, Damon is the last person I'd personally want coming after me if I was Boruto. Even if you know how his Shinjutsu works with the reflection, it's a matter of the fact that Damon, when playing around, left you unconscious. Imagine what they truly bloodlusted Damon. He break Boruto even faster than Brock Lesnar broke Cody Rhodes on Raw after Mania, where the only thing missing from that scene was the rubber chicken someone threw in the ring next to Cody's body after Roman pinned him the night before. A bloodlusted Damon versus Boruto, that gets ugly very quickly. Having Boruto be hunted down by Damon, it will be a true chef's kiss when we consider what Kawaki's doing because it will be a true checkmate for Kawaki in his plan to have Boruto kill. Now, the only reason why I hesitate just a little bit on this is that while this is a truly great plot twist, this feels like it might be something that we're saving for part two of Boruto's story, but it could work if you want to continue stacking the deck against Boruto. But it could work if you want to continue stacking the deck against Boruto. That way it makes them struggle way more and it gives them more to overcome as a character or as a lead protagonist. At the end of the day, even in a slice of life series, conflict is one of the things that the story needs in order to progress itself. Not all conflict has to be physical physical like a lot of people tend to say, but for a battle shonen, this would be a great move should something like this happen. It makes you look at Boruto potentially bonding with Damon when they're playing video games a lot differently now because what might have been a potential friendship building up between the two of them, it has no real chance of being anything close to that anymore should Kawaki actually pull something like this on Boruto. This is a really good way to continue making Kawaki be built up as a very effective heel for Boruto, who would be the babyface in the scenario, or to use storytelling terms, it's a good way to make Kawaki feel like a menacing tyrant standing between Boruto, the hero of the story, and the resolution to his actual issues. This gives Kawaki a type of heat and narrative weight that makes him more of a dangerous character. We've had overwhelming force in the form of Ishiki where the character created a sense of helplessness, but this slow build towards Kawaki's turn gives a different punch in the gut for us as readers where it's the right blend of power and calculus and character motivation that makes it hard to root for the character, but every action he takes converts more people who used to hate Boruto into actually being fans of the character, which is what you should want your antagonist to do, make the hero of the story a lot more likable. Before we get out of here, I do want to say I appreciate a lot of the concerns that you guys gave me in terms of like my voice and everything. I told you guys a while back I'm dealing with an illness right now. I feel a lot better. If if we get Boruto manga spoilers tomorrow, my voice should be closer back to what it should be. I feel like about 85% right now. My voice is still a little bit hoarse. Anyway, I'm curious to know how you guys feel about this suggestion. While you think that overclick, here to watch my How Strong is Ting and Uzui video on Kryptonian saying. <laughs>